continuing the server-side code, we'll now delve into the location logic, which maps to the WebSocket support in Spring Boot. WebSocket is a special type of socket that is created through HTTP or HTTPS request. A web ser server that supports WebSockets opens a regular HTTP connection and then uses the, the socket open there to continue working as a regular socket. As a result, the WebSocket setup is slower than a regular TCP socket, but they provide the same level of flexibility after creation. The advantage over TCP sockets is compatibility and the ability to pass through, pass through potential problematic firewalls as those would see a WebSocket as another HTTP connection. The WebSocket API includes two types of packets, text and binary. In this case, I'll use the binary protocol because it's pretty easy to do this in Java. Up until now, all our communications went through web services, which is convenient and scalable. The fact we can use tools like curl and the network monitor to see what is going on under the hood is very helpful. However, web services suffer from the performance overhead and fixed structure issues of HTTP. For more interactive data, we would prefer something like WebSockets. Some people use WebSockets for all their communications, and it might work for your use cases. A lot of developers use the text-based WebSocket as a substitute to web services altogether, and in some cases, that makes sense. However, as I mentioned before, we have decades of experience with HTTP. It works well and has a huge infrastructure of tools behind it. WebSockets are a low-level API. There are some higher-level abstractions on top of them, but these often go back to the problems of HTTP without giving much in return. Spring Boot has decent support for WebSockets, but you need to activate it first. We need to define a configuration class that sets up the WebSocket environment. This class serves as a configuration tool for the WebSocket API defining limits, quotas, and handlers. Here I set common configuration arguments for WebSocket messages, setting buffer sizes for the different types. Here I find the handler class to the WS MSG URL, which will receive all of the WebSocket callbacks. Before we go into the handler class, let's create a special service class to handle location-based callbacks similarly to the user service. Most of the location APIs map to the user class, but it's logically separate from the user service. We will periodically update the user's location. Notice that location can only be updated by the user himself as the token is required for that operation. It's more intuitive to work with radius from the client, but the JPA query language makes it easier to work in absolute coordinates, so I convert the kilometer radius unit to latitude longitude values. We have two versions of the query. One finds all of the drivers in the area so we can draw them on the map. The second searches for available drivers only for hailing purposes. I use a version of the method that only returns a part of the user data as we normally don't need all of the data. Once this is in place, we can implement the handler class, which is the actual WebSocket implementation. But first, let's review the communication protocol. This is the binary structure we will use when receiving a request on the server for a location update. So when a user changes his current location, we will send this data. The message type should be one for a location update from the user. The length of the user token string 
followed by a byte array of the token length representing the string. Notice that I used bytes instead of cars since the token is 100% ASCII. I can rely on that fact and reduce the packet size further. The location data and the radius slash direction of the user. A byte which is set to 1 when we are hailing a taxi in which case it will seek only the available drivers. Once this packet is processed, the server would return the cars within the search radius by sending a packet back. In this case, we don't need the token as this is a message from the server. The response type can be 2 for driver position update and 3 for available driver position update. The entry indicates the number of drivers in the returned data. The rest of the lines repeat for every driver response size times and include the position data for every driver. Now that we understand the protocol, let's dig into the code that implements it. The handler class is a binary WebSocket handler that receives callbacks on incoming packets. Let's go over the code. These are constants used in the binary protocol to communicate the type of request or response. This is a callback for a binary message from the client. The API works with NIO's byte buffer, which allows us to run through a request efficiently. We get the length of the user token string and the byte array. Again, I used bytes instead of cars. Since the token is 100% ASCII, we can rely on that. Assuming this is a location update, we pull out the data and update the user object. We prepare to return a response based on the seeking flag. We also need to mark the response type correctly. I used a byte array output stream to construct the response. I used try with resources to close the streams automatically when I'm done. I just write out the response data to the stream. And finally, we convert the byte array data from the stream to a byte array, then send to the client. This is it for the basic server code.